Hey folks, Scott Weingart here. This is the video that goes along with MCrit podcast number 33. If you haven't listened to the audio podcast first, this is not going to make a whole lot of sense. So go back, listen to the audio first, and then come back to this video. What you're going to see in this video is excerpts from clips from Dr. David Newman Toker and excerpts from videos from an article published by Dr. Jorge Cata and Dr. David Newman Toker both of which we reference before each video. So this is how to diagnose a patient with acute vestibular syndrome as to whether they have a benign peripheral cause or a cerebellar stroke. Third element, the head impulse test of vestibular ocular reflex function. We'll start by asking the patient to look straight at our nose and then let them know, warn them that we're going to be moving their head from side to side, first slowly and then a little bit more quickly in a moment. Just keep looking straight here at my nose as we go. I'm going to turn your head a little more quickly. And what you can see that I'm doing is displacing the head laterally by approximately 20 degrees and rotating rapidly back to the midline. The same over to the other side, rotating rapidly back to the midline. The key to the technique of this maneuver is that it's performed with a rapid head rotation, and generally it's best performed the patient being unaware of which direction they're going, so often during the technique we'll oscillate between slow movements and fast movements, paying attention to the fast movements and sometimes changing the direction. So that the patient does not become aware of the uh, order in which they're being tested, which can make the findings disappear after several cycles. And what I'm gonna ask the subject to do for the head impulse test is look straight at the camera. And <clears throat> What you're looking for is any evidence of slippage of the eyes off of the target during the head rotation. So I'm going to place my hands gently on the side of the patient's head and warn them that I'm going to move the head from side to side. I'm going to rotate your head slowly from side to side. You just keep looking straight at the camera. Doing a great job. And now I'm going to turn the head a little bit faster, okay? And just relax your neck. looking straight at the camera and what you'll note that I'm doing is displacing the head laterally by about 20 degrees and rotating rapidly back to the midline. Okay? Again rotating the head approximately 20 degrees and rotating rapidly back to the midline. The key in performing this test is that during the head rotations there need to be uh, <clears throat> opportunities to alternate between fast and slow or change up the direction of the head movement so that the brain stem doesn't interpose a <coughs> saccade in place of the vestibular ocular reflex. If it gets too predictive, the brain stem simply creates an artificial fix for the broken vestibular ocular reflex response. So typically we'll try to make the sequence more unpredictable. Just try to relax your head. And again, the eyes stay straight on target, looking straight at the camera. No refixation saccade indicates a normal response, which in the context of an acute vestibular syndrome indicates uh, usually that the problem is a stroke rather than a vestibular neuritis. looking at the camera the whole time. Okay, and then we'll do it looking at the camera the whole time. Okay, and then we'll do it looking at the camera the whole time. Okay, and then we'll do it.
And then we do it to the left. And then we do it to the left. And then we do it to the left. Is examine the eye movements, looking first for spontaneous nystagmus. So we carefully observe the patient, having them look straight ahead. Just imagine yourself looking off into the distance without looking at anything in particular. In this particular case, since we have a normal subject, there's no evidence of spontaneous nystagmus. The next thing we'll do is look for some gaze evoked nystagmus, possibly direction changing, by having the patient pursue a target, such as the examiner's finger. So watch my finger as I move it slowly from side to side. During this, we are looking for breakdown of smooth pursuit eye movements, and these pursuit eye movements are normal. <clears throat> and holding the eyes out laterally in the extreme position of gaze, we're searching for any nystagmus that evolves in the far lateral position. We'll hold the eyes there for a few seconds, and then do the same over on the other side. What we're going to show is the search for nystagmus. And again, pursuing the finger from side to side, looking for evidence of breakdown of smooth pursuit, and here the smooth pursuits are normal, and evidence of nystagmus out on far lateral gaze in either direction. Pause. Look, look, look there, yeah, that's great. Now what I, what I want you to do is look to the right. Now look to the left. Now look to the left. Look straight. Look to the right. Look straight. Yes, we want to make sure that the patient has no evidence of ocular misalignment vertically. So we'll have the patient again look straight ahead. This time, look here straight at my nose, and then simply cover each eye alternately. Keep looking straight at my nose. Keep looking straight at my nose. And looking for any refixation or movement of the eyes in response to the alternate cover test. We saw none. The patient has no evidence of strabismus or ocular misalignment, either vertically or horizontally. If we saw vertical misalignment, we'd be concerned that the patient had skew deviation. And finally, searching for evidence of skew deviation or vertical strabismus with alternate cover testing. We're going to alternately cover each eye with the patient looking at a fixing an object, either the examiner's nose or in this case the camera. Just keep looking straight at the camera and I'm going to cover each eye alternately and watch the eyes for any evidence of movement or refixation. What you can see is that the eyes stay stable. Small refixations horizontally are normal, but vertical refixations are abnormal and in the context of acute vestibular syndrome indicate skew deviation. I'm going to uh, cover your eye and then yeah. keep looking. Yeah. And one sees a right hypotropia and a left hypertropia. The other point is that his Horner syndrome seems to be more clearly defined. All right, folks, that's all for today. Again, those videos were supplied by Dr. David. Newman Toker from his site, and from an article by Dr. Jorge Cata and Dr. David Newman Toker, which was published in the journal Stroke.